You're hearing these dolphins use high-pitched clicks and whistles to navigate a world of obstacles, danger, and prey with their pods. But these spirited signals are in jeopardy of being drowned out, as the ocean gets noisier every year. When we saw those dolphins and put the hydrophone in the water, I almost cried. It was the first time in my life I could hear their voices. With more than 500 miles under his belt, Ben LeCompte and the crew are more eager than ever to get his Trans-Pacific swim back on track and continue raising awareness for ocean health. They will then resume the protocol of collecting 8 to 12 hours of underwater audio each night in an effort to build the most comprehensive soundscape of the Pacific Ocean in history. Yeah, you can yeah. hear them. Yeah, okay. Bring me oh yeah, bring the me. clicking. Yeah? Insane. The first goal for us is to have this photography of this sound postcard of the ocean. This data could help scientists determine how crowded the ocean is with marine mammals and how they're affected by man-made sounds like shipping traffic. The more you have sounds in the sea, in the ocean, the less the animals can communicate between each other. So the less they meet, the less they meet, the less they reproduce. Oh yeah, look at the size of the dorsal fin. The team is using a calibrated hydrophone a microphone that picks up specific frequencies within a 20-kilometer radius underwater. It can detect everything from the playful clicking of dolphins to the sound of sperm whales hunting. We have 25 meters of cord, and we connect to the recorder. The frequency to record the cetacean sounds uh, should be specifically 96 kilohertz and 24 bits. Then that is a good setup. Now we'll put it in the water and put it to work. Since you don't hear much underwater, any little difference in sound, you are going to pick it up. So when you hear that clicking noise, you are already looking around to see where the dolphins are, and it's a very unique noise. The soundscape is a recording of a multiplicity of sounds. Recording these sounds will create what scientists call an acoustic transect. Each night, recording from sunset to the morning with the same hydrophone at the same position from the same boat, so it makes something like 3,000 hours of recordings. When the team receives the data, they feed it through artificial intelligence models they've developed that can recognize the calls, clicks, and whistles of a number of different cetacean species. Anthropophony are the sounds from human activities. Biophony are the sounds from biology activities. And geophony is the sounds from the wind and the, the rain and the tectonic. So our work is to use what we call the machine listening system. We train this machine on the soundscape or cetacean sounds. And then they are able to index or categorize classify sounds from many different species. This catalog could map population densities of whales and dolphins as the crew travels east, and may even pick up some surprising signals along the way. During the Cold War, some did record what they called a big duck. They didn't know at all what it was, and they thought it was a special submarine from the east block. But it was a minky whale. And this minky whale has been completely described only 10 years ago. If audio evidence can reveal where cetacean superhighways cross the Pacific, then policymakers can develop quiet zones to help alleviate the stress of human noise on wildlife communication. This is why continuing Ben's mission to highlight ocean health is so important. The best outcome of the swim is to demonstrate that there is a continuity uh, living ocean. It's a complex habitat. It's full of life, and the density of this life will be depicted by these recordings. What do they sound like? Like... <laughs> <laughs> Water is not empty. It has been very surprising to see how much life there is. 
we have our everyday whale. Like at the point where we drop Ben, we always have a whale <laughs> waiting for us. So to enter in some kind of relationship with this world and with all these mammals and all these creatures in the water and learning from them by listening is very, very touching. Be sure to visit seeker.com slash the swim to read daily updates from Ben LeCompte, track his progress in real time, and watch more videos about the science happening on board Seeker. Click here for this next episode, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.